Hey, what's up? It's your girl Tamara, aka Girl from Harlem. And hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ray Daniels, aka the Culture Referee. And this is the Guy Show. And before we get started, like, subscribe, save. That is super important for us to keep this thing going. If you're enjoying it, share. Send to somebody. Send to a hater. I don't care if they hate on the comments. I don't care. As long as y'all looking and watching and 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 and, is, and feeling something, we appreciate y'all all day. About um, producing for movies and how is that different from normal production and storm Good question. So they didn't have much money left in the budget. They said we're gonna give you. We got five hundred thousand left, and we was getting fifty to hundred grand a record. So that wasn't for us to do twenty one records. Yeah. Harvey was not with it at first. So so I remember we both decided to do it because we thought this is the movie, right? And Randy Spinlove, <coughs> who is now the head of um, Paramount, hey, oh, I didn't wow. know the play. He got the he got the he got the job as the head of Paramount Music after us doing Dreamgirls. He was the music supervisor. Mm. And um, so shout out to Randy Spinlove. He he that took him to the next level. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a he's a great person. But he was in there with us, and I remember we were only going to spend a few months doing like twenty something songs or something. When it was all said and done, we, it was 16 months and 61 songs. Not total songs, but 61 pieces of music. So everything you hear in Dreamgirls, we had to shoot. We had to record it, and they had to shoot to that the next day. So sometimes the director would be like, I want the horns to be different than this. So we'd have to wake up at 5 in the morning and do live horns, get in the studio and do that. It's much different than you got kids making records and laptops today. We had to do everything live. So when you're making movies, it's a, it's a much... It's a it's 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 different, you know. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Dream Girls or even the James Brown movie, I'm gonna go to that for a second. We did that with um, Chadwick Boseman, and um, we had to really go in and recreate James's um, music because they didn't have any good recordings of his music. And when you're doing it for movies, it has to be on stage, it has to be Dolby. So we had to recreate the sound of all the James Brown songs for the movie Get On Up. So back to back to Dream Girls. So we do the movie, and um. Out the gate, it you know it it was a it was a success, and I think we were nominated for Grammys and Golden Globes and Critics Choice Awards. We won at some of that stuff, and we, we were the first producers to have three songs nominated for an Oscar um, at the same time. And we lost to Al Gore's um, speech. Mm -hmm. He did a global 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 warming. warming yeah we lost to that at the at the Oscar well, whatever so but we're <laughs> the first ones to have three songs at the same time I think nominated at the same time is the pay different for movies oh absolutely so like, tell me about more that more or less my first I think our first royalty check for dream girls is nine hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars each so really if you round up a million, million dollars each. Mm -hmm. yeah and we get dream girls checks today so instead of the smart play that we did because Harvey's super smart if we're going to do this for 500000 y'all got to give us a royalty in the movie. So every time you see Dream Girls come on HBO, run it up. You can't tell me twice. So we did that. We did that with all our movies. And we did, um, I don't know, we've, I, I don't know how many. I haven't really added it up, but I think it's 12 to 15 movies or something like that if you add them all up. You did Straight out of Compton too, right? All the music for it. They didn't have the masters. Oh. So we had to re-record... Um, we had to record all those songs, and, and we did that with two of our engineers, Andrew Hay, Harvey, me, and I would go in every morning and record. Actually, you had to record Ice Cube's son. Sorry, I'm not I'm too far. I had to actually go in and record Ice Cube's son's vocals, and Jason Mitchell was the hardest because he had to try to recreate Easy's vocals. And then you had the actor who did Dre, but we had, I had to go in at 8.30 every morning to do that for Straight Outta Compton. And that was another super successful movie, and we did the Pitch Perfects, um, all those movies, and, you know, and this goes on. Okay, I want to ask both of you guys a question because I think that the answer might differ. Um, Ray, why are you smiling like this? Because I'm, we're, it's like the teachers here. We're like more behaved. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking at us being behaved. This is incredible, yes. right? Yeah. You know, I, you know, I heard, I heard one of your other guests. They was talking about who do you compare me to? Can't nobody got, ain't nobody got more movies than us. What? What, JD? Yeah, JD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ain't got more movies than the underdogs. Nobody got more movies than y'all. Nah, nah, they ain't did that. What's a movie that you worked on that people probably wouldn't know that what you worked movie? on? Huh? What's the movie you worked on? That's people, I would say people won't believe that. Um, Kung Fu Panda, Shrek the Third. We worked with Eddie Murphy and all those actors and did that stuff. We did um, a movie called Bobby. We did the end title for Harvey Weinstein, and it was Mary J. Blige and um, Aretha Franklin was one of the <coughs> Grammy for that. Um, we did the new Sparkle. We were the last ones to work with Whitney 
uh, before she passed away. I met Whitney Houston at y'all studio. At my y'all. studio, yeah. Yep. I love that. Yeah. Um, you said end titles. I heard you mention that before. What exactly <laughs> is that? The end title is the song at the end of the movie, a big song that plays when the credits roll. It's a big, mm. it's a, it's it's a a big, big deal. It's a big deal. Because end titles can win you an Oscar, too. And how does that change? Like Rihanna's song should win the, the Oscar. Yeah, I definitely think That's that. That's the end title. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely, like, going to be a big thing. Yeah. I hope she does get it. Um, so the question I wanted to ask both of you are, who's the biggest or who's the most important person in the song-making process? Can the I, producer. Can I, can I answer that? I said a producer. Can I say something? Because I, I hear Ray talking. This is really important for every writer and producer to listen to today because I've evolved. When we came up, producers, you know, so producers get a fee, right? Mm-hmm. And writers have to wait usually to get their royalties to get paid, right? But we're not in the, we're not, it's not the same. They're not giving out the same amount of money in publishing deals for writers anymore. So it's, and they're not giving out the same fees for producers anymore. So if you want to have, I'm telling all producers this, if you want to have a solid team and you got a good, great guitar player and a great bass player, let's talk about the music side first. Mm-hmm. And they're working with you and I got a string guy. So what I'm doing, when I'm writing, I might write the music myself. And music is 50% of the song, so you know. Mm-hmm. A lot of people like to call it producing. It's music. Qu- I, could give, I could write the piano composition, right, and give that to Quincy Dones, and he'd be the producer of it. Yes. So people mm-hmm. always try to combine the music part with the production part and just call it the producer. That's what this, this generation does that. And I'm fine with that because if I'm making the music, I'm producing but it. But you're a real producer, though. I'm a real producer. So what I've done is I got... Um, DeMonte Posey, my boy Nomad, I got Rodney, and I got Bluetooth. That's my that's my band, right? Mm-hmm. We can all, if we need to do something for a movie, <clears throat> if I need to get live stuff played on things, I'll send them what I've written, and I'm going to give them songwriting credit because it's just it's, it gives them incentive to, to write their part on there, right? Instead of being greedy, most musicians would be like, this play on that, it's $500, I'm not going to give you no publishing. But my guitar player, by the time he gets done, he's going to make that song a different song. So I think we have to be fair to the musicians, and producers need to pay the songwriters. When you get a fee, Agreed. you should share <coughs> that fee. You know, if you're a big producer like me or JD, then maybe you give, you take half of that fee, and you take the other half and let the other writers break it up. Mm-hmm. I am breaking up the money. If there ain't enough money, we can break it up even. But 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 it's an important factor that is that <clears throat> you guys get your fee. Yeah, we get our but, fee. No, no, I'm saying, you know, you guys get enough where you you can break off yeah, 10k breaking, to a writer and it don't hurt. It I'm, don't break, hurt I'm the breaking fee. it off every time. Now. Of I got I got my my main guy. I have a few writers that I work with, but Felly, the voice that shout out to yeah, Felly. Shout out to Felly. We got to bring Felly on, and he's like out trying to outright everybody right now. He's the new baby face to me. Mm. So, other than Tehran, is no, that's know, fine. No, hey, listen, he's coming up, you know. Let me tell you something. One thing about me, I never get offended. No, it, no, no, no. Tehran, I'm just saying, no, but I'm just, like, like some with, people will hear you say that and be like, motherfucker. No, nah, with all like due that. respect, Tehran is Tehran. We both love Tehran. So, yeah, anytime sure. me and Felly can get in with Tehran, we're going to do it. Tehran is sure. amazing. So, sure. he is the today's baby face, if you want to call it that. Somebody so. gotta be it. So, Ray, you didn't answer the question. I said the producer. I mean, the producer's the end all be all. The producer decides who's in the room. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the music, everything, the producer. That's the most important person on the song. I think outside of the artist to me. I okay, think, I'm like, so, so, just so no, 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 no. What I'm saying, okay, so what I'm saying is that <clears throat> the producer has to bring it out of you. Yeah. Every Whitney record, she's not performing vocally the same on. Yeah. So the producer might say, like, like Whitney's vocal performance on is not right, but it's okay. She's like talking Friday night. You and your boys went out. She that was a producer that was like, "Nah, we not, you're not blowing on this song. You going and believe it or not, I think that's Lashawn and Harvey on that record. So yeah, um, they were working with Rodney. Of course, Rodney's the mm-hmm. producer, but that was his team at the time. So mm-hmm. back to what you back to your question about the producers. We got to deal with the mood swing of everybody in the room, mm-hmm. and that's that can be tough. Like you gotta you got certain people people certain they might show up late. They might do this. I, you got to be able to get the song done mm-hmm. at the end of the day. So that could be the most important person. I never thought about it like that, but we, I got to be there no matter what. I got to be there on time. I got to be there at the end. I got to be there when Negroes leave. I got to be there to turn it in and deliver a record. When I come to him and give him a record, he don't care about the other four writers on it. He cares about you bringing this record to me, and it better be a hit record. And that's the bottom line. Exactly, because I met Damon as an A&R, and when I brought in the artist, he kind of took over. I would just say this, this, and he would, he would say, I'm going to do what I did like, some, like this. I'm going to say, oh, that's dope. Yeah. But it was, but he was a conductor. 
Did you come into the game with that type of confidence, or where did you learn that from? Yeah, I've been making records since I was 13. So I started playing piano when I was five. God's been good to me. It's a blessing. Where are you from originally? Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City. Go on to Kansas Chiefs. City. I don't know anything about Kansas City. So you had a good music program in school. How'd you get into piano and stuff? I just could play already at five. So my mom, my grandmother said, you, you need to get that baby some lessons. Mm-hmm. Told my mom that. And I, that's a gift. You know, like some people, you have musicians. What I've learned, if you have certain musicians who are, who are taught, I took lessons and all of that, right? You have certain musicians who are um, who take lessons and they're they're like machines. If you put sheet music in front of them, that's what they play. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. a whole different a whole different thing in a person who can create music. Mm-hmm. Guys who can this guys who will play circles around guys who can write songs, but they can't write songs. There's a huge difference in that. You know, um, Babyface is one of our best songwriters as a musician. Jimmy and Terry or Jimmy Jam is one of the baddest piano players. He's mm-hmm. tough. And then you think about Prince, who can play everything really, really, really well. He play. He, he's self taught too. Self taught. So. It, it come that that's a gift when you're able to co- um, compose and create that composition because a lot of people just think of lyric and melody as the writer of the song. The mu- you got to have a you got to have a canvas, and if you don't have music that has love in it that moves this way or moves this way, then it's not it's whatever the writer's writing may not feel right. It all of it has to be combined to make you know a hit record to me. I like the way you put that. That was a really good way to word it. Um, in your previous interview, you said that. Um, you refer to someone as a trash writer, but how do you separate good writers? I know her name now. Oh, Lord, I didn't know. What was her name? Tiffany Fred. You can't <laughs> just going to say the name. Yes. No. Yeah, yeah, because she tried to friend. trash my man. Like, you, Tiffany, I'm, my for friend. the record, for the record. The, the, <laughs> the face. Tiffany, my friend. <laughs> hey, man, for the record, the underdog stopped in 2016, but I'm not going to let you just trash my dude. That's my legacy. You know what I mean? Like you, whatever you know, you whatever deal you sign, you sign. She's trash. Bro. My question was. You're not gonna put that on there, but I'm telling <laughs> okay. you, she's absolute trash. My question is, how do you decipher what a good writer is from a bad writer? She's the worst writer I ever met. Not, not. All right, she became good <laughs> later, but the problem is, is you know what makes you a bad writer? What is when you bite the hand that feeds you. If we gave you a check and an opportunity, you don't get to go run around and trash people after that. You accepted that. You don't act like you don't know when you couldn't pay your bills or wipe your butt. And you took that check, and you needed that to get your gas in your car and eat. You don't get to go talk trash about us. We 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 opened up a platform, and there's a lot of millionaires that came from the underdogs. Mm-hmm. And I just won't accept people talking trash no more. I'm not doing it. I'm I think that that's really that. what defines your legacy. Yeah. How many people were able to come under you and be successful? Yeah, we made a lot of people successful. They didn't have to pay for no studio time. Our our overhead was thirty five fifty grand a month. Mm-hmm. None of them paid one dime. Okay, so we're not gonna figure out an exact distinction yeah. from a good writer. I'm sorry, that's your friend. So let's can we can we spark no, 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 no. First all of all, right. first of all, first of all, this this sh- we, what we do is rooted in truth. Yeah, I just I forgot that you said something about a writer, and then when she brought it up, I was like, it just caught me off guard. I don't know, I know Tiffany as like an activist. I don't know as a writer. Well, the activist is on Harvey's neck. No, I know, but she you know. she's not she's not only on Harvey's neck. She's on everybody. Who she in the music industry? Who she think takes advantage of creatives? I think that we go through. I think there there's levels to it. You know, Barry Gordy owned all the publishing at Motown. Yeah, right. but but hold on, let me get let me no no I, no I, no no no. First of all, I'm I'm not gonna I'm agreeing I, with you. I think we evolved into people having more freedom and all of that. But we just did what was for the cycle at the time. But we we, we gave out deals that Universal gave us to give out pe- to people. But 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 I gotta say something. I'm I'm gonna remove music from it. Okay. You don't see people like people that play in the league in the '90s in the in the, in the NBA in the '90s mad at the guys that are getting paid today. You do, yeah, you do. They're not mad. No, but. they're not. No, no, no. They're not hating. They're not like, boo. The, the, he, you know what I mean? Like, only person I know does that is Shaq, right? Okay, can I say something? No, no, no. But let me <laughs> let me feel what I'm saying. Okay, but I historically, hear where you're going no, with but, it. no, no, no. But no, this is a point to it. Historically. Things will get better. Yeah, that's how life works. Yeah, like you have to walk so someone can run. So I do have a problem with people who complain about things that happened 15 years ago compared to what's happening now because now times are different. Right. That's all I was gonna say. Can I say something else? Of course. Well, if we gonna really put the blame on somebody, we got to put the blame on your old best friend. I don't know if he's still your best friend, Kevin Hall, because I told what? him not to sign <laughs> Tiffany Fred, and Kevin <laughs> Hall absolutely signed. That's her. Him and Harvey gave her that deal. This I didn't want to sign her. 
I just no, but it, but, to but, do but, with. but 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 that's important. Yes. That's important. Yeah, I don't want nothing to do with. I don't want her speaking my name on it. I haven't heard her say your name. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think she do. Don't. I don't think because I we, we cool like. But that. she'll say the underdogs. Don't say that because I'm the other half of that. You can say I don't even want you to really mention. I don't think Harvey tied her up in the room and said sign this deal. All right. So Tiffany aside, okay. how do we? Distinguish what's <laughs> a good songwriter. No, I'm not. No, 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 but you're my bro. brother. I'm your brother. And now that like I, you, I want, I want you, dog. So it's the thing. I just, <laughs> I, I just didn't know. I think well, I it's think, good though. Can I say so how do you oh, listen? You say, it is you great. Saying? You know what she was supposed to Man, do? Man, JD came in here and set this fucking shit on fire. <laughs> I believe that she walked. She came in and got on Jennifer Hudson's first album, which was nominated. Maybe we got a Grammy for it or something. <sighs> Maybe like take that and go build off of that. Don't go take. Don't don't be mad at, at the people who got you at least pack to first you know pass the home plate. I do say this. You gotta win. I do say this. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What was hard? <laughs> this is, okay. No, no, let me say something. <laughs> A lot of people blame creatives and middlemen, and what I mean by middlemen is is that the underdogs, and this is not me blaming nobody. Let's be clear. Okay. The like. Because I've had writers sign that signed to me that wasn't happy. Right. And I let them out their deal. But I'm, I'm not going to act like I knew what was in that deal. I'm not going to, like, the terms that we use. Like, I let her out her deal. No, 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 no. Him, his, By the way. Say, no, no, here's what I'm saying. No, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. If there are only a few people in the music business that can dictate terms. If I have a label deal with Warner Records, there's only so much I can do. Right. They put the money up. They they dictate the terms, right? Period. So a lot of the times it's misguided anger because you're mad at the underdogs for just basically behaving and doing music and behaving in the music business the way the under y'all didn't have no choice when you had I had this I had the same partnership. That's why I only think it's fair to blame Kevin Hall. Shout out to Kevin Hall. I like, I only, I like Kevin no no Hall. I love Kevin Hall, but I don't think it's fair to blame Kevin Hall. I'm, I'm not saying no, 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 that. no, 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 no. I'm, okay. I'm saying I'm with you, bro. I'm with you, uh, Damon. I'm just saying that, dog. When you, if you mad at Generation Now, you gotta also be mad at Atlantic because Generation Now doesn't dictate all their terms completely. They are the they are the intermediary right. between Atlantic Atlantic and the artist, and they get a cut. But at the end of the day, they can't say like if you signed the Rick Ross label, Rick Ross can't say I'm gonna give you ten million dollars. All you gotta do is give me ten percent. Because if his deal is with Warner, they're going to say, no, we're giving them $10 million and we're not taking 10%. We take 20% distribution fee. We take this much point, and he's going to get this many points. Let me ask you a question. I'm gonna, That's I'm the music gonna, business, I'm going to put it wrong. I'm going to put it on me. When I signed my deal with Kenny, right, what was the number? 150, oh, 75,000. 75,000. Guess what he told me I had to do? Write my way out of it. Do you mm -hmm. think I got mad at him? Do you think I was, do you, have you ever heard me say anything negative? So let me say something. I want to say something. I've been in the music business going on 18 years. Yeah. And I've seen people who the business wasn't that good to. And those people hate the business, hate the people in it, hate. And mind you, I was in a publishing deal with my guys and I managed, we was in a publishing deal for 10 years. Didn't know the deal wasn't good till like six years in. Right. Because we was just like, we can't believe somebody gave us a check, and we took that check, and we just you made it work. We made it work. Look I'm saying where you at today. I, I agree, but what I'm saying is, is that that's my point. I'm <laughs> saying is that, but you don't see too many people who have made it work like you did or like I did that are popping shit. You know what? The I did people too? that usually pop shit are the people that came into the game, tried, and then get, and it wasn't good to them. Let me tell you what I did. Like, like there are some women that you might have dealt with or I might have dealt with that are like, man, I love Ray. We don't deal with each other no more, but I fuck with him. Then there's some who are like, fuck him. I hate him. I hope, and it's like, bruh, I treated y'all both the same. It's just one, one and one loss. And the one that lost is usually the one that hates people. And I don't know the situation to y'all and Tiffany Fred, but I do understand her perspective. Her perspective is, is that these are predatory deals. I know her perspective on everything, but my thing is, is that you can't blame the underdogs. No. Because all they did was give you an opportunity that someone gave them. Right. So what I'm saying to you, it was a Rondor situation, universal. And um, look, some people made made James Fauntleroy is wealthy, period. So either you take either you take that route or you take the route I did with with Kenny. I was signed to Kenny. 
I went through three baby terms. Babyface. Babyface. I went through three terms from 97. By two by 2000, I went to Big John and Jody and got $3 million. And I kept getting three million and kept on recouping because I kept on working. But that's what I'm saying. So the people, what you got to do is you got to you got to write writers. If you sign Producers a publishing too. deal, write your way through it. Stop complaining. If I agree. You, if you hey, look, if the house is on fire, you need to be writing a song so you can build the next house. I never expected nobody to help me, and I. That's why we got through our stuff. I remember somebody looked at our deal and they said, you're going to be in this deal forever. And I remember thinking, I thought that's what was the point. You're never in a deal forever no, no. if you write the songs. No, no, no. But you get out of the MD, M, MDRC deals. That's I had we, that. I know, but that's what we were in. Yeah. And it was like, he was like, you're not going to get out of it. So when I, mind you, when I figured out what that was, I'm like, damn, that's fucked up. This is what, this is what I'm going to say. I, I'm, I'm grateful for what, <laughs> what Kenny did. Kenny and um, Edmonds, Tracy at the time. I'm grateful for what Big John and... Jody did for me at EMI, and I was able to take that and build a legacy called Listen, the Listen, let me tell you something. You give a winner and a losing hand, they're going to find a way to win. You give a loser a winning hand, he's going to find a way to lose. That's just the way the world works. Yeah. And maybe Tiffany is better served as an activist than she is as a songwriter. Right. Some people come into the game as artists and then realize, I don't want to be an artist no more. I want to be... A manager, or I want to be an A&R. Like, so I, but I just would say don't blame the guys that are in the middle because yeah. when you have a deal, which I had this, I, 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 I probably had the same deal you had because I had a joint venture with the yeah, same company. The same and when you do a deal, I can't just be like, Tamir, you're dope. I'm giving you a million dollars. They, they're like, that's not, we, 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 can, we can do that on well, our can own. Can I say something in all fairness? Go ahead. You know what they did? They said, okay. You guys brought us James. We got to give him $2 million. I had to sign off on it every time. We kept giving it. Yeah. I got to so, write that side of me right now. She, they, she, she, she about to so get a big you, check, and it, I had to it, sign it, off on it. It could be in my opinion that she's not a great songwriter, but what was James? What did he do? He put James, the points on James the is different. I'm, just, I'm saying to you, he was able to go get the, he took advantage of Universal. This is what he did. But she also, he, but hold on. But he also, but hold she, on. She's also a woman. Okay. And... There are certain things. No, no, I'm for real. There are oh. certain things that women have to go through in this business that men don't. Oh, okay. Can I say something like, about like, that? We like never, producers. We we like, have, hold on. Have you ever been at the table with a, 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 a female producer that was like, yo, I'll put you on this album, but you got to fuck me? But Has I'm that ever happened to you? But I've never told <laughs> you. Has that ever happened to you? No. Exactly. But that I've happens never, to women. But also, we never, Harvey and I both, we weren't the kind you of guys. You didn't do it, but yeah, that doesn't do mean that. that that wasn't the experience. That wasn't her experience. Not with she that kinda, she, Not with you, maybe, but she, I've seen her tell stories of producers saying to her, why you don't have your tits out today? She's like, why is that? Oh, a, I never did. I don't that's do my that. point. So so I'll say this to producers who do that. That's, that's horrible. That's sucker shit. Yeah, like you got to think about, first of all, keep your, um, this is what I, my advice to songwriters and producers. You never see me in the studio hugged up with somebody we working with. I just don't, I don't do it. Some people do it and it's okay. I've seen it work. I've seen it not work. When I'm working on music, I'm trying to I'm trying to create and, and, and make magic. I'm not trying to get, I can go get But there are some dudes who are predators. Okay. And she has a problem with the predators. Have you been around the bar? Have you been around me and Harvey? Are we both I just said right? you're not like that. Right. Okay. But I'm saying, dog, let me tell y'all something. So what I think what's happening. I, I just want to tell you something. Hear <laughs> me out. Yeah. I want to just say something. It's important. I cause I cause I feel like you're defending yourself rather than understanding. Okay. In this game. Some people get abused. I remember being signed. My group was signed to Convict. Yep. I remember they played with us. Like, I don't know if it was on purpose. I'm not here to say it was on purpose. Sometimes in the business, you just ain't got time, and you tell somebody what they need to hear. And I remember, I remember they played with us, and then I fought my way in as a manager. Like, that's how we got our record deal. We didn't get our record deal because Akon, we signed to Akon, and Akon took us to Interscope. That's not what happened. Right. We signed to Akon, and Akon told us, y'all are going to get y'all deal after Ray Lavender album drops. And I was like, and everybody in the room was like, okay. And I was like, that don't fucking make sense. So you mean to tell me that I got to, what if his album don't drop? Do I never get my deal? So Akon was like, well, if you don't believe me, you know, you want to come to L.A. with me, come to L.A. with me. And I was like, okay. And you went. Oh, no, he thought I was saying, okay, I believe him. I was like, okay, book the flights to L.A. Yeah. And he flew us to L.A. It was like we walked in a room full of all these huge industry, industry executives, and Akon disappeared. He's fucking Akon. He's the biggest artist in the world. He disappeared. You're lying. 
That's, I'm telling the honest truth. He disappeared in the room. What did I do? Did I sit in the corner and be like, damn, he fucked us? No. I saw somebody I knew. Hey, I know you. How you doing? She was like, good. And we was like, and Timothy was like, yo, when are you, you going to visit the Virgin Islands? And she was like, if I had an artist from the Virgin Islands, I would visit. I said, you want us? And she was like, what? What do you mean? I, y'all are with Akon, right? I'm like, yeah. She said, well, Akon has another AR. and r That's Tubby. I said, you want to be our A&R? She was like, yeah, I want to. Okay, cool. You are A&R. That's nuts. Literally got in a con found us like three hours later. <laughs> like, yo, we got to It was, we was, we landed at like 12 p.m. and left LA on the red eye. A con found us. Yo, y'all ready to go? Yeah, we ready to go. Get in the car. Man, I told y'all, man, it, it ain't time for y'all. Nah, real talk. I told y'all, man, y'all gonna have to wait. Nah, nah, nah. No, no, no. We talked to Erica Grayson. Erica Grayson said she'll be our AR. Okay, okay. That's, I know, and he said, yeah. And he said, I said, that's cool, right? He said, yeah, that's cool. I text Erica. Akon said it's cool. That's how our deal got done. Then Erica went to Jimmy and said, Akon got a group signed a convict. Then I remember finally getting the deal done and being in the room with Akon and the whole crew. By the way, Akon and they're all my family. They're my niggas. But I call bullshit. And they liked me because I call bullshit. Right. And I remember being in the room and they was like, yo. It was like, okay, he finally made it in the room. You one of us now. What you think I said? No, the fuck I'm not. <laughs> if I was one of y'all, I, would, I wouldn't have to fight to get in this motherfucker. Right. Y'all didn't. I, well, so, I'm in here. So the, I'm in here. So now let's get the business. We can switch situations. But I'm, but gonna I'm just you, saying. I'm going to tell you the difference in that situation. No, no. I'm just saying that imagine if I, Akon had about 50 artists signed to him. Yeah. And I remember seeing artists over the years and they would be like, man, that motherfucker Akon, man, he fucked us, da, da, da. I never felt that way. Maybe he was trying to fuck me over. Maybe he was trying to bullshit me. But I didn't let him. Right. And, and that's why we here. My, and every time you put a fucking task in front of my face, I was going to call bullshit. Right. And I feel like as your friend, you shouldn't have a problem with me calling bullshit. Because, nigga, it was bullshit. Well, this is what I'll say. What we did offer is you had, who did he tell you he met at our studio? Whitney Early Houston. Minutes. Whitney Houston. But everybody was at your studio. So if you're a songwriter and you're watching Chris Brown, Whitney Houston, everybody you could think of, we work with them. Y'all They're there that. weekly, right? As a songwriter, as a female, shouldn't you be trying to hit them targets? Yeah, but here's the thing. She like, never hit the target. But right, it was well, we're going to move on from Tiffany. I'm just Tiffany. saying, but, she, no, no, but it's not about Tiffany. This He's is big, back to Tiffany. No, no, no. This is bigger than Tiffany. It. This is how you, <laughs> this is the business we are in. Yeah. And Tiffany is just an example that we, Damon used, but this is the business we are in. Yeah. I see so many people mad at people for how shit turned out. Right. Bruh. Nobody in this business was dealt a perfect hand. Do you know what? Yeah. Do you know somebody that was dealt a perfect hand? Nobody was. The ones that win are the ones that get through the bullshit. And the ones that lose is the ones that find a problem. So some people see challenges. Other people see problems. Every time somebody put a a problem in front of me, I saw it as a challenge. I took it on as a challenge. And I fucking won. Yes. That was it. It's not. This is. First of all, the music business is way easy to get in now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back then, you had to know somebody. Yeah. And I was a guy. Like you said it, we was Clive's guys. Yeah, y'all was Clive's guys. I was a guy. Nobody wanted to fucking help me or my guys from the Virgin Islands. I took it every chance I got. Yep. And I will do it again. And I ain't never complained when I lost. And I never fucking celebrated when I won. Because I didn't look at it like that. Look, if you're a songwriter and you find yourself in a situation like with Ray and Teron, right? You see, they putting points on the board everywhere. If I'm part of Radar, I'm trying. I'm asking Ray, what you got, what you got going this week? Mm-hmm. If I'm a new songwriter. Because I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to do all I can to end up on one of them projects. Mm-hmm. And the ones that do, do. Win. And the yeah. ones that don't, sit in the corner. Yes. And they find people and they talk shit about you. But people with low vibrational people attract low vibrational people. They do. I when believe that. I don't want if you talking negative <laughs> shit around you know what me. I call it. Tell me. I used to call it this. You got to stay away from, from people that are in the come up quick. The people in the come. There's the people who are successful. Tehran's successful. Mm-hmm. I'm successful. Then you got niggas that's trying to make it. Mm-hmm. If you if, if you get caught up in that, it's it's you're not. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But then you way. got then you got people who are complete finessers, yes. and they are in the room trying to add a word here or there I'll to get them, a piece. I call them court reporters. Yeah, and in the they just yeah. and in the they don't really <laughs> do nothing. The. So well, let's talk about that for a minute. <laughs> okay, because you say I know Tehran has this thing where 
split should be fair if everybody's in a room. I got a problem with ending the people in the room. I'm not giving you. We're not letting them in the room, though. Okay. I got, yeah. Oh, no, we're not letting them in the room, though. Yeah, yeah. The end but, what the I'm, but what I'm saying is, is that, I'm just saying is that, bro, you got to be able to weed out the bullshit. See, you are a producer. So let me tell you what you know while you're in the room. You know, I don't give a fuck how many writers is going to be on this record. When they want to buy the record, who they going to have to pay? Hmm. Exactly. I had a writer. So that means I had to clock at the whole room. Who, right, right. Who in here? Right. Who, who doing what? Who? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I knew that the only way I can have the audacity to ask you to get paid is if my guy brought more than anyone else. Yeah. And that's why nobody had a problem paying us. I don't work with N and the people. Yeah, I got it. That's what I'm I'll saying. I'll catch one sometimes. Yeah, but you're a producer. I, 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 but I, I, even as a producer, you don't give a fuck. Hey, you don't care as yeah. a producer. You don't care. You know why? Because when they want to pay for the record, they are calling you. Right. They are not calling the songwriter unless they respect that songwriter or they respect that songwriter's manager enough to have the respect. But most songwriters don't have that respect. I got a question. Okay. So you got you mentioned Hot 100 you, Records before. I love before, you too, man. Hey, you got to edit the Tiffany Fritz. No, what? no this is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you I think you'll make for good. No, no, no. Like, this is, let me tell you why this is good. Wow. This is good because no disrespect because Tiffany's my girl, but Tiffany ain't editing. Tiffany is telling her truth. Okay, well, that's my truth with it. And yeah. and, t- and I'll, sh- I'll tell her, by the way, because she'll be like, I-, I can't wait to hear it so I can do a video <laughs> responding. Yeah, I'll kill her. I know, t- I know she is. I know Tiffany. Okay, yeah. so y'all talked about being like class people and people kind of back in the day only working with who they were like able to work with. I no, no, not who they were it, able. Listen, how does that work? Yeah, that's so what I want to know. talk about opportunity. We were class guys. He gave right. us the biggest. I got a list of the song. It would last <laughs> for so long. It's the longest song deal ever. Like it's I heard crazy. that. I heard. I heard. I got, that it. I, got yeah. it. I got a spreadsheet of it. But like, and if you look at the numbers, because it's got everybody's songs next to it, it's crazy. But not. But it's. But if you somebody's guy. That just means that, like, Cash Money had Manny Fresh. Yeah. And then when Manny Fresh had the workload, they got Jazzy Faye. Yeah. Clive had the underdogs. Yeah. Jimmy had Timbaland. Timbaland might have... And Dre. And Polo. Yeah. And, 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 and Pharrell. Yeah. L.A. had Tricky and the Dream. He like, did. Everybody had... Some guys. Their guys. Also, now, that, now, every, now, everybody worked with everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but I you had, just knew, <laughs> when you made your... You, it's <laughs> like, you know what it's like? Let me tell you what it's like. When it's time to run your business... And you need a million dollars for your overhead for your company. You calling your guy, your Clive. We got a building we want to get. We need this, this, and this. And Clive's gonna be like, "I got you. Let's do a song deal. Let's do a label deal." Yeah. And and you All guys right. are gonna give me your best song. So when they make their best records, Clive hears them first. If they made a record and Jimmy got it before Clive, we got a problem. Oh, we got a whole problem. Now, yeah. now, 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 if Clive got it first. Then, and he passed on it, Jimmy got it, cool. Now, it's not like it's written in stone. It's not like he's like... Yeah, but Cosmo was like, why did I hear that hit? Yeah, no it's not question. like he's... But he's gonna... It's like... No question. Hey, bro, why the fuck you... Why well, you we, playing it for me we, first? We ended up with a song deal with Jimmy, with L.A. Yeah, everybody with got, everybody, we had but one your song everybody. deal with Jimmy came, and L.A. came after Clive. Oh, when y'all made y'all yeah. best records, who's y'all first person y'all called? They, they all went to Clive. That's what I'm saying. And then Clive had to pass. Like, when... Like, Polo, but Polo tells a story of... First of all, it's better for your business. Polo yeah. always tell the story about when he did the um the record uh Hot Toddy, I think. Yeah. For Jimmy wanted it and Clive wanted it too and he was like I'm giving it to Jimmy and Ch- Clive, I think they gave him like $250,000 for that record for Usher cuz he was like I got my guy. I'm a, I'm always giving him the best deal cuz when I need when Polo wanted his house, Jimmy was like let's get the house. When Rodney wanted his yeah. house, Jimmy want when they want some that's what you mean by yeah. your guy. It's just tricky. Red Zone, that nice studio over there, L.A. L.A. I got y'all. So that's what you mean by your guy. LA's, and L.A. Fa- and face guy was Azoff. What was Clive? No, no, it was Azoff. At, Azoff gave him the money to move here. Clive, Clive came later. Yeah, Clive came later. Yeah, but it was Azoff. Azoff so Clive, was the guy. Clive again. ended up having Diddy, us, and L.A. and Baby. Yeah. We were the Good last ones, yeah. Um, you spoke about writing records that um, make the most money. Does that affect the authenticity of a record? I was so I'm the cre- I'm I'm the champion for the creators. Everybody clap their hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's why that's why I get so mad when people try to talk mess because I will run through fire for a creative, and I've had personal conversations with people to try to help them. And you know, I got a creative in the room. He know it. So the thing is, is for me, um, you know, are you good to creatives? Why? Because you had a great experience with one. Yeah, with who? Face. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a That's my point. Yeah, yeah. Usually, but imagine if you your first deal, you got fucked. 
You got yeah. dog. You, all your publishing was gone. All you probably you probably be right here on the, on the rampage too. You nah. had a good deal on. For, I'm saying you I had did. a great experience. Yeah, yeah, I had a great when you experience. could tell when somebody has a good daddy. I and was a good working mama. at the time. You could tell, the you could tell when somebody mama look, is a mother. Like your listen, mama got to be a mother. I was definitely working at the nicest studio in Los Angeles. Which yeah, was way. and you had to walk through the hallway with four hundred thousand plaques. Yeah, you had to like you couldn't go in there thinking you was good. It was intimidating. It was intimidating. So I knew I wanted to get. I got that wall now. I got that many plaques, so I had to go get that. Ray got it in his house now. I'm so proud of Ray. Let's yeah. clap for Ray and Toronto and they plaques. Yes, I love it. So the question is, like, Harvey's a straight businessman. He's creative, too, but businessman first. And that was the great thing with us, right? So for me, I would be like, man, we can't get that song away. He would sell a song to somebody in two seconds. I was the balance in keeping. <laughs> no, we can't get that with it this way. We got to hold on to this, right? And let's give it to that person, you know. Um, and like for instance, I, we talked about No Air. I said we ain't putting Jordan Sparks on Jordan on No Air without Chris Brown. No. I said there's no deal. And they told me you're gonna lose your song deal the job. I said, well, we just won't have a song deal the job if y'all can't put. But I also knew we had Take You Down. You did Take You Down on Chris too. Yeah, right? yeah, they was running up the chart at the same time. I knew Take You Down was coming out. I said I need this to come out at the same time because I knew mm-hmm. Clyde was gonna put out. Um, I mean, um, Job was gonna put out No Air. You a bad motherfucker. You ever I, feel I, like that? I'm, a, I'm, a, man, we we the same. <laughs> we are the same. <laughs> I'm saying you're bad. Like they don't know. Can you give a? Can you just run down some of the records you've done for Tamira? For Tamira, I know it all. Okay, so um, I'll go down for you. Let's say these are the times. Drew Hill, that's Babyface. Me and Babyface, never gonna let you go. Um, those are my first two number ones. Never gonna let you go. Faith, Faith Evans. And then we did a song for Pink called Most Girls. We made more money than both of those songs because the song ended up being in a toy, right? Wait. So that was we broke Pink. I got a question about that because you had mentioned like Hot 100 songs versus R and B songs. Oh, it's different. Yeah, why? Tell me about it. So you got you got R and B songs, which is the Lavender chart. It used to be. I don't know. What <laughs> Lavender chart. The Hot 100 is always. They, here, this is that what sounds I, mean. This is my problem, though. For real, <laughs> this is my this is my thing. The Billboard. Why can't we have an R and B chart, a hip hop chart? Why do we got to combine us black people all in one chart? I got an issue with that, right? So you have the, it used to be just R&B, and then hip-hop is strong, really. So you, it should be separate. Hip-hop is also instant. It is. R&B take, R&B is like, R&B, is, a R&B is a food that you bake. Hip-hop is yeah. fast food. So, so if you think about those two songs. Those Most songs, of it. Those songs were out a few months before they went number one. They had to cook. They had to be on the radio. They took time. It was a different time, though. Um, Way different. Now you gotta. By the time you put a song out, you gotta put another one out in a month. You know, you gotta yeah. re- keep on releasing. As an art, and you gotta learn how to. Now more than anything, you gotta know how to be. Part of being an artist is not just music. You gotta know how to stay relevant. Yeah. Like SZA hasn't dropped the album in how many <clears throat> years, but she always knew how to stay relevant. Yeah, she's always been here making something. You gonna do something. Her record with Future on um, Khaled's Future album, I so love. Yeah, yeah, same with so, same with Lizzo. Lizzo knows yeah. how to keep herself relevant, yeah. re- whether or not it's a it's she's in album cycle or not. Okay, so you refer to yourself as a three generation producer. How has producing changed over the course of those three generations? A whole lot. Let me tell you how. So when I started. And I was 18. I mean, I started before that. But you used to have a jerry curl, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I had that. <laughs> I need a picture of this. Yeah, I look like maybe. Can face. we have it like? Put at the <laughs> she like maybe face, maybe face. Yeah, I, had, <laughs> I had the same cup. We gonna we can. I'll give you a picture. Y'all can put it on this thing and just break it in there. But I, um, actually, actually, like I said I, I kind of, I kind of feel bad for you for one thing. What? Because of who your ex wife is, people diminish. No, I'm for real. People diminish. Try to people don't acknowledge who the fuck you are. Hey, man. And, and then no real talk. No, it's not. You don't have to respond to that because this is like some friendship. Like. Yeah. I know you are a goat. I know you are that. But then it's like, oh, he was married to such and such. It's like, bro, like that. You are in the business of being quiet and making hits. That's what you're. The, that's the business of. Yeah. And you just so happen to be married to someone who was in the business of being loud the best way they can. That's how they made their money. Right. So like, it's so so crazy how people refer to you as. I'm like, do y'all know the fuck, dog? Underdogs had the best studio. They were like a university. Yeah. 
For 16 years. For years, dog. Like the best studio in, in the valley, the best creative space, dog. When I was working at Epic, I would go to the, I would do meetings from the underdog studio. I out. would just go hang out. And Damon was the centerpiece of that. Cause Harvey was like the, he was the buttoned up guy who was all about like getting shit done. And Damon was the guy who, as soon as you walked in, he was break dancing on you. And you was like, yeah. and he was like, let's make some hits. And he was, yeah. And he, all that. yeah so for, I just always <laughs> want to say, cause it's like, bro, like, I just wish that people like, it's like, you the shit, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I gotta it, say man. that. Okay, so back to how it's changed over the past So how it's years. changed over the years. I remember um I'm gonna talk about an AR person, a legendary guy, Lou Silas Jr. And I remember trying to get in the meeting. He worked for MCA Records, which is now Universal Records. Mm -hmm. He got some history. So Lou Silas did Don't Be Cruel album for um Bobby Brown. He was a huge executive. If you watch the new edition movie, he did the new edition stuff. I remember being out, going outside in 1989 with a cassette tape to go try to play our songs for, and I was already signed to Uptown MCA with a group with Andre Harrell, but I still want, I wanted, I wanted to be a producer, so I wanted to get on the Bobby Brown, next Bobby Brown album. So we would go out there with our tapes, and we would send, we would literally put our demos of songs in FedEx packages, in every, I'm sorry, in every week, send out tapes. That's, that's how you try to get your, your demos heard. And then, um, Ray Parker Jr. discovered me second. Ray Parker Jr. Uh, sung Ghostbusters, right? Yeah, he's, he made like $100 million, call? $100 million dollars off of one song. That's just legendary, oh, wow. right? <laughs> he's very wealthy and a, still a good friend. But he stuck me in a room, and there was tape machines and the SSL, and that's how I learned how to use everything. And I, and I, um, I did a pub deal with him. It was a light one at the time. And we did that, and we worked, and I had my first deal with the group with the artist, um, his name was Jesse Powell, and there was some other guys. Jesse just passed. Um, he was a great he did friend. You? Did you? No, I didn't do oh, you. Okay. I didn't do you, but he um, he just passed away this year. Great friend, but we did a deal with Clive Davis. You didn't know this. This is uh -oh. history. So that my first record deal, my second record deal, as an artist, not just a producer, because I thought I was going to be Teddy and Kenny and be <laughs> the producer of it, was with Clive Davis. And then to circle back years later to end up the underdogs making their deal with Clive Davis. He remembered me from back when I was a kid, wow. and um, I grew up and was there making hits. And he said, "I need, we need that, run that." So, and then we did. That's how we started the Underdogs. But back then, we had to record everything on tape, and um, wasn't no Pro Tools, wasn't no Auto Tune. Auto Tune was not. You had to actually produce. You had to actually make sure a person sang mm -hmm. on key. Mm -hmm. I remember in that first meeting with Clive, he played "I Will Always." He played "I Will Always Love You" for me. I think. By Whitney Houston, from, the, the, like yeah, before it came out. Before it came out, wow. ruined me because I thought she was in the room, and because the speakers came on and you heard that voice and it messed me up. But, you know, <laughs> and um, I was just thinking, this is awesome, you know. And to later be able to work with David Foster and be able to work with Babyface, who both contributed to that album, which I think is so like sixty million albums or something, something to date, you know. So like being able to work with those kind of guys and have them work with you and work on your craft, it's different. Kids are really literally using FL and dragging audio that's pre-programmed and making tracks with it and having hit records. So it's different. And I think it always evolves. I think there's always room for the live musicality or more things, music. There's also room for that. Because that, I, like, I like everything. I love all music. And that's how you become old by saying, all oh, that shit they doing ain't cool. It's cool. <laughs> Because niggas is loving it. Right. So you got to you gotta always evolve. Music is music. You know, you only become old in it by not paying attention to what's cracking. Agreed. Okay, I want to ask you guys to do something. Ray, don't kill me. Okay. I want you guys to name your top five each producers from the 90s. Just okay. the 90s and it. producers only. I'm going to let him go. I don't have one. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Go. Know. Well, I have it, but I just would rather... I, I just know I just know it pisses people off, so I want to have some put some real thought to it. It goes in it goes in this order for me. Oh, he got the order and everything. Oh, um, I shouldn't call it an order because he's top three. All of them can be number one, so I'm just gonna give it an order. All you guys are number one to me. Yes, and it starts with L.A. Babyface, Jimmy and Terry, and Teddy Riley. They are the all of them are number one because they ran the '90s. That was J.D. List too. Yeah, he JD, I, th I think that was that was his my worst. So <laughs> then I'm gonna go and then I'm gonna go J.D. after that. Because he did crisscross and he did all the things that he was on there popping about. He really did it. I just ain't never popped my collar like that. I need to get on there and pop my collar. <laughs> <laughs> say, who can you compare me to? I'm like, oh shit! I, hey, that was, was incredible. Yeah, it was amazing. Thank you, JD, for that. <laughs> um, so then I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Jermaine Dupri, and then I'm gonna go. Um, she's top ten, right? No, top, top five. five. Top five. Okay, I'm gonna go. Um, 
I'm gonna go with the guy. I'm gonna go David Foster after that. David Foster, for all y'all who don't know, did Through the Fire. Who bro, That broke Kanye, mm -hmm. right? So the original song is um, um, Chaka Khan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So Through the Fire. That's that's David Foster. He also did yeah. After the Love, after Love is Gone. Right? So, and then he did Whitney's Bodyguard album. Mm -hmm. But then he did Chicago. He did I Have you, Nothing. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's cold. He's one yeah. of the coldest. So, so I'm going David Foster right up there. Matter of fact, David Foster, I'm sorry, Jermaine. David Foster is after the top three. And then there's Jermaine Dupree. And then, um, let me figure out who That's five. This. No, it's not. It's Teddy, Jimmy, L.A. Terry, Terry, Jimmy. Terry, that's three. Teddy Riley, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jam and Terry Lewis, Face, J.D., David Foster. That's four. That's five. It's five. Is it? Okay. <laughs> there it is. That's my five. I was going to let you get a little honorary no, mention in. L.A. Baby Face, Jimmy, Terry, Teddy Riley. You're right. David Foster, Jermaine Dupree, that's I wasn't gonna say nothing, but you know, <laughs> yeah, Jermaine Dupree kicked it off with. I mean, he was he was a kid, yeah, doing jump, and I remember being as excited about that as I was excited about, you know, um, New Jack Swing. All that was popping at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's my five. Ray, you got a list for me, or are you gonna sit this one out? Um, I just I, I just want to sit this one out. I want to. I can't think. Like I I would have added. I would have said Face, in um L A. I would have said Dallas Austin. I would Dallas, said, Dallas, Dallas Austin. Uh, I would have said uh, uh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis for sure. I would have added Timbaland because Aaliyah came out in '94, mm. and Timbaland was producing Aaliyah. And I ain't gonna lie, to no, this no, day, no, I'm sorry. To I'm this so, day, nothing. Up. To this day, nothing is better than. I messed up. I got a, can I give you my final answer? <laughs> no, I'm saying. I'm, <laughs> hold on, hold on. This is hard. I'm telling I messed up. Cause don't, it's not for it always so looks it's easy. It should be ten. <laughs> no, it's not ten. It's five. No, no. Let me give you my five. My five is this. Give me five. L.A. L.A. Babyface, Jimmy and Terry, Teddy Riley, R. Kelly. But what the fuck? <laughs> How y'all gonna leave Bump and Grind and all that Listen. out? I'm sorry, you can't. He's the greatest songwriter of all time. She says producer, though. That's He's a producer. Like. He produced all of it. Yeah, I know, but. He produced it all. He, he likes to try to stick. No. When you say producer, he wants somebody that's No, he produced no, no, everything. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, I don't think R. Kelly consider. I don't think everybody, anybody the referred to him as a, Celine Dion. I think R. Kelly is the best probably songwriter okay, okay. of the last then, then, then fucking if you want to take 30 years. I don't think nobody's better from 1990 on to, to today, and he ain't had a hit in years. I don't think there's nobody need, better than R. I Kelly. Need, I need six because I can't leave out Dallas. Dallas Austin. <laughs> so Dallas is six. Yeah. There we go. We're going to leave it at that. We can't leave him out. Yeah, Dallas Austin is incredible. Yeah. He coming on the show, by the way. He hit me. He the one hit me like, how you going to be? I need to come. He need to come. Wait, come. before we go, you owe us a Tupac story. I'm not going to let you get what out you of here. Do, what you need on that? No, you, you told us last show that you had a Tupac story for it? us, and we ain't get it. No, we so. never got it. Yeah, we ain't get it. So, yeah, y'all was too busy. I don't know. Do you have a Tupac story? We didn't get one on the last show? No, you There's told no us. Tupac story? You said you that you would give us one, but you got cut off because you started telling another story. No, so. I, I, I got a question I was going to just ask you. Give me your craziest studio story. You can say the artist's name if you want, or you don't have to. We was like... Like, what the fuck am I doing here? Oh, the craziest story. I, th I think one of the craziest rooms was after Tupac was shot and we all ended up at death row. And you had Snoop. It was a bunch of blue on one side and a bunch of red on one side. It felt dangerous. I thought going to die. What? Yeah. It felt <laughs> super dangerous. It's not a room I want to be It was crazy. You know, it was, it was crazy. And I never felt crazy like that ever in any of them sessions or anything like that. But that felt crazy. It was tense. I don't want nothing to do with that. Okay, so I'm going to ask you. I know you answered this, but I want to ask you myself. Do you consider yourself a goat or underdog? Absolutely. Which one? Goat or underdog? Goat. And why? King. <laughs> I ain't goat. King. Which you the king of? Music. King of music. Yeah. Period. King of the creative. Let's go. Cre king of the creatives. Yeah. Do you have a... You know why? Because I'm here to give back to the creatives. King makes you... You got to be willing at some point to give back and help. I'm all about helping. I'm all about putting what I know and giving back and, you know, doing it. In that Who's way. your favorite artist to work with? In my life? Yeah. Michael Jackson. Man, he knew Michael Jackson. He's not going to give us no Michael Jackson stories. But he's giving, the, I've had the best Michael Jackson stories from this guy right here. Some funny stuff happened. I can't believe I'm not going <laughs> to. Okay, so my favorite artist to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's there's levels to it, right? I'm gonna give you a few. I'm gonna okay. tell you why. 
So I'm gonna go with you. Go give you some top five artists you enjoy working. I'm gonna with. go. I'm gonna go Chris Brown mm-hmm. because it felt, I watched it. I didn't even know it was gonna be as big as it was gonna be from the first album. The second album I knew because we watched him perform at Clive's um, annual Grammy party. Well, he jumped, well, and he, he lit that uh, thing on fire. I was at, there that night. Yeah, 15 years yeah. old, and I said, okay. So that's when we came up with that second album, which we did most of. You did turn up the music too. That I was on the second album. That was no. That was five albums in. Okay. So so we um. So that, I, that that's that to me, I felt like he was this generation's so, Michael. So Chris Brown, Chris Brown, and then let's go Justin Timberlake. He absolutely he had, he as a writer and as a musician, he made me rip better in the session in the few sessions that I worked with him. He's super talented. He pushes. I'll be playing one thing. He's like, let's do this. So he's super creative. So I felt like he had he had magic about him that I didn't really get to, um, you know, get experience. And I think one of my my um, I can say this now because LA confirmed. I think one of my uh, my uh, my bucket list, who was one of my favorite singers on Planet Earth, is Usher, mm-hmm. and being able to work with him. I'm working with him now, so that's um, that's a blessing to oh, me because you imagine having everybody's plaque in the world and you don't got an Usher, right. nothing. So By the way, Usher's like, the most humble he is superstar I've ever been around. Yeah. And I just I believe that he's scene wise nobody can beat him singing like that. Yeah. He's got that. Yeah. So um, maybe Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. he he'll, he'll get he'll get Mario the best. Nah, not singing. I don't know about that. Him and Mario neck and neck. I don't know that little tiny desk Mario's one of the best Usher singers. Did. Mario's one of the best male okay, singers. I gave him a hit. I know. I, I could. No, you did. How could you? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm sorry. But finish your list. Usher. So so Usher's my Chris favorite. Brown. I'm um, so and then um, Justin Timberlake. Beyonce would be number one, and I'm gonna tell you. What you doing, Beyonce? Dream Girls. Oh, okay, oh. my bad. Listen, listen. Okay, okay. okay. So. Um, Grammy for Listen, by the way. Um, <laughs> or a B Day album. A B Day album. The B Day album. You don't be the album. Listen, they put it on there. Okay. Yeah. Along with um the Dream Girl soundtrack. Okay. So Beyonce was the kindest, sweetest. She never had makeup on. Absolutely Jay Z don't send nobody after me, but she was absolutely <laughs> gorgeous with no makeup on. And she came there every day, kind. And then we had another person who worked another one of the other Dream Girls. She wasn't even a star yet and had the worst attitude ever, but Beyonce was kind every day. She was on a um, cayenne pepper diet so she could mm-hmm. make sure she stayed fit for the gowns. Mm-hmm. It never was angry. was always sweet, came to work. Came, she was the biggest professional ever. For me, I try to tell people, how are you going to be an artist if you can't get your weight together, if you can't get this? I watched the, one of the biggest stars in the world keep it together in my face and remain kind for 30 days straight. So I'm going to say, artist-wise, the next one, I'm going to say Eddie Murphy in Dreamgirls, and I'm going to tell you why. He didn't talk to us for three whole days. He came to the studio. He would play the guitar, sing on the mic, didn't really talk to us, play the piano. He was getting in, um, what does the actors do when they get in um, character? Character. Character. Took him three days. And after the third day, he had us dying every Mm. single day. He was, he's a genius. Like, people don't even, he should be respected because he can play piano and play guitar and do all these things. He's really gifted, really gifted person. All right, so I want to thank you for coming back. And I know that this is You'll probably be back way more. Uh, we didn't even got to the funny shit yet. No, we ain't got to. Oh, yeah, we just, we, just we, why we didn't laugh a lot today? We didn't. You want me not to laugh? I like that, though. That yeah, was yeah. good. Yeah, we're a little this, bit yeah. better. We you, got, you, got, you got, you got, we had the thing off. You got lightweight mad at me over Tiffany <laughs> Fred. I love no, that. No, 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 I didn't get mad. No, I'm just saying, like. Yeah, that's your friend. I get it. Nah, it's not that. It's just. It's just, I feel like a problem with our community and the creative community is that we attack each other without understanding the position that well, each other is in. You know what you should in. do? We should get us on a thing together. Let's I agree. Oh, boy. I agree. Yeah. She would love to. Because, yeah. you know, I, but, and I don't always agree with everything she says, but I respect the fact that whatever she says, she stands on. And to me, that's what I like. I like people that stand on their shit. Yeah, okay. 